Uhuru comrades, and welcome to today's Omali Tommy Sunday study featuring Chairman Amalia Shatella. My name is Akilia Anai, Director of Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party, as well as your MC for this morning. Today's study is highly important, and we encourage you right now to invite your friends and family to this study. To continue our series of displaying the practical work of our party, we'll hear a presentation from our Deputy Chair, Ona Zanea Shatella, the brilliant leader and coordinator of the Economic Front of the African People's Socialist Party. We take the concept of dual and contending power, a concept developed by Chairman Amalia Shatella, to initiate the process of negating the colonial capitalist system and show how we've made it real. As a framework for this discussion, we will reference Vanguard, Chapter 2, so, um, our party solves the problems of the revolution starting on page 54. We will start with an overview with our chairman. Deputy chair will present afterwards, then the leadership of our party and movement will engage in discussion regarding this topic. Following some discussion, we'll open up for our live audience to ask questions of any of our panelists present today. And this is the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhura Movement. It's my honor now to introduce our leadership the leader of the African nation and the worldwide African revolution, Chairman Omali Ishitela. Uhuru, Chairman. Uhuru, thank you, Comrade Director. I wanted to uh, express my appreciation to you and, and the members of the Central Committee who are participating in this discussion, and all the party members and members of the Uhuru movement for being here. This is an important study that we want to do. We've initiated a process a while ago to take us beyond my uh, the process where I have been uh, simply reading uh, different uh, sections of our political rep political report uh, to the seventh Congress in this instance and and then subsequent to, th to that the political report to the first plenary of the seventh Congress and it's important for us to help everybody understand that the party did. Uh, come into existence as a part of a process, conscious process to complete the Black Revolution of the 60s. Many people who've come into political life uh, come in without understanding that we are part of an historical trajectory uh, that, uh, and, and uh, therefore uh, making the assumption that, that they invented themselves, that somehow uh, they came uh, into existence uh, without the benefit of the struggles that uh, preceded them and without recognition of the historical process and of the science of revolution. But the African People's Socialist Party uh, has been quite conscious since our inception that we are part of the process of completing the Black Revolution of the 60s. And when we say the Black Revolution of the 60s, we're not talking about something that may have been happening in New Jersey or something that may have been happening in any single place, but wherever African people uh, have been oppressed and where we have been uh, struggling uh, to change our circumstances. In fact, we extended beyond uh, simply where Africans were. We're talking about a period of time where revolution was the main trend in the entire world. And the oppressed people of the world were, ex were excited and engaged uh, in struggle. It's not now, it's not like so much now where people have an opportunity to read about struggle, but people were actually engaged in struggle some way or another, either directly, indirectly, you couldn't open a newspaper, you couldn't turn on a television set uh, without seeing some evidence of struggle and being thrilled by what you were seeing. It, it was clear to us that, uh, that uh, liberation uh, was just around the corner. And so we were engaged in that fashion. But that revolutionary movement was crushed. We mentioned that in this chapter that we are referencing. Uh, we also mentioned how the examples of Vietnam, uh, the examples of the Korean Revolution. In fact, we talked about how the African Revolution, as it expressed itself inside the United States, along with the Vietnamese Revolution, posed existential threats to uh, the entire system of uh, world domination by US imperialism. And when we say an existential threat, we mean that the existence of the system under, under the domination of the United States was threatened uh, by the African revolution in this country, something Africans have not yet, uh, I don't think, uh, 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 come to uh, understand in the deepest way. And the Vietnamese revolution, even today, uh, there are references about the Vietnam syndrome uh, uh, that made Americans for America for 
decades uh, uh, timid about attacking any country because of the defeat that was imposed on them by Vietnam. But Vietnam didn't do it alone. It was something that uh, the African revolution inside this country, it was Cuba, it was revolutionary movements happening all around the world that was forcing the imperialists to try to fight on a thousand different fronts. And uh, that is what helped to, in some instances, almost paralyze the capacity of US imperialism to crush the resistance of the people. But the party, uh, as I mentioned, uh, have al has always been conscious of the need to complete this revolution. We saw uh, in the wake of this uh, uh, vicious assault on our revolutionary movement, and we saw uh, different uh, formations coming to existence, some uh, some retreating, some obviously retreating, uh, some being uh, moved to assume that revolution was not uh, possible, revolution was not desirable. And of, of course, uh, with the defeat of the revolution, murder of revolutionary leaders, uh, we had these substitute leaders who were sometimes put in place by uh, by the U.S. government or U.S. imperialism or some sometimes uh, uh, thrust themselves uh, into uh, positions of influence uh, uh, over the dead bodies of revolutionary forces. I could name some of them. I won't right now. We'll do this at some other juncture. We'll talk about people you wouldn't even know today. You wouldn't hear anything about today. If King hadn't been killed, if, if Malcolm hadn't been killed, uh, they wouldn't have, uh, have, have uh, been able to ascend at all. But I'm not going to go uh, into that process because the revolution was defeated and our objective was to finish the revolution, not to create a substitute for the revolution, not to concede uh, to the conditions of colonial domination that had been imposed on us. Beyond that, there were all kinds of theoretical issues and questions, ideological uh, debates that had begun uh, uh, through uh, the revolutionary uh, period that was silenced uh, by uh, the guns of imperial white power. So uh, many of these issues went unresolved. The party was determined uh, to deal with them. The party was determined that we should move beyond the limitations of what we saw with the Black Revolution of the 60s. And, and that's what we initiated. So when we come to this era now uh, that we, uh, from which we are speaking, uh, within which we are speaking, we come to this period now in history uh, we are talking about, uh, as I mentioned earlier, completing that revolution. And, uh, but it is a period where uh, different kinds of political forces uh, have arisen uh, that do not even consider uh, the need uh, for a revolution uh, as relevant, who uh, assume that if you talk militant and if you use this um, method of communication that we are engaged in right now, even social media and things like that, it becomes a substitute for actual relationships uh, between people. Uh, it becomes a substitute for having to go out and, and organize people uh, to, uh, to engage in struggle that can change our circumstances. In fact, the objective now is to get as many forces as you can to view what it is that you're saying and to like what you're saying on social media. Uh, and so our party had has to contend with that reality of so many people being locked into that place. And we're saying that we've been doing these studies now, and the studies is more than just an engagement or relationship that I have uh, with this computer, with this, with this computer that I'm, uh, I'm sitting in front of, but rather uh, it is uh, to uh, reveal uh, the, the strategic uh, trajectory of a revolutionary project, it is to expose uh, to people outside of our party and our movement, uh, uh, the party itself, so that you can see and understand uh, what it takes to make a revolution and, and, and consciously participate in that process. So uh, today we're talking about this whole issue of uh, dual uh, and contending power. We have with us uh, Comrade Deputy Chair Ona Zene Ishitello who is responsible for leading uh, the economic work of the African People's Socialist Party. I say the African People's Socialist Party, but you must understand uh, that our party uh, is an organization that relies on a relationship to masses of our people. The, the uh, strategic uh, uh, 
thrust of our party coming out of our seventh Congress really emphasized that. It emphasized that we will be building uh, regional political and economic hubs, uh, an objective of which of course uh, would be to uh, put down in every city within every region, uh, not only within the United States, but where, wherever we are located in the party, in every village, uh, an office, a place where we can connect with, with the people in the community and give them access to the process of winning power and participating in exercising power because our objective ultimately is to govern. Uh, we are having this discussion. We have created an organization not just to criticize the white man or to criticize the system. Our objective is to erode uh, in as much as we can in the process of making revolution uh, the power of the colonizer and to assume power ourselves. That's what we have been doing. That's what you we will talk about uh, today. So. We talk about uh, dual and, and contending power, which is simply a strategic uh, approach uh, to winning power through, as the comrade uh, director Akile just mentioned, through negating uh, the power and the influence of, uh, of the colonizer. And we say the colonizer, we mean the imperialist, we mean the capitalist, capitalist. Uh, we talking about an assault on the system through negating uh, its influence and its capacity, its power, wherever it is that we live. And this is something right now, uh, given the crisis of imperialism, where you see a greater incapacitation of uh, the uh, colonizer uh, in, immediately inside our communities, though uh, the colonizer attempts to uh, use uh, the uh, neo-colonial state apparatus that, that he has created in various places to exercise that power. But in many ways, we see uh, a retreat. Uh, we see that uh, economically, uh, and that's really important to us because uh, within the United States and certain other, uh, what they characterize as centers of imperialism, uh, we see uh, that major uh, corporations, retailers, et cetera, uh, collapsing and retreating. And uh, there's a space that's there. People like to talk about there being uh, uh, food deserts uh, in, in the African community in the United States, which is to say that there are no supermarkets or very few supermarkets and things like that. Uh, but the absence of a food, that the absence of a supermarket by the colonizer, the absence of an economic institution uh, in the possession and ownership of the colonizer simply means that it is a vacuum that has been created now uh, where the colonizer, where we once had control of our own economy. Uh, and that control was, was uh, uh, something that was uh, negated by colonial capitalism now we are negating that. We are negating that when there's this vacuum that's created uh, by the retreat of the colonizers. The economy is, is crashing. The, uh, the supermarkets are disappearing uh, uh, altogether. And it gives us the space to, to move into those places and replace the power, to replace the influence uh, of the colonizers. So when we talk about dual and contending power, uh, we're talking about negating the power of the colonizer. And it's only a dual power uh, until we uh, destroy the power of capital, destroy the power of the colonizers. That's why I say it's a contending power. It's not just it's not just dual power. There are some people who have attempted to appropriate uh, this uh, this concept uh, uh, for, of the party about dual power uh, to only uh, 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 assume that it's about uh, having a power side by side with the imperialists. I was in not an objective of creating a a side-by-side a, a -side relationship or uh, a power inside imperialism, our power is to negate the power, negate the influence uh, of the colonizer. So uh, negation means more than simply saying no. Uh, uh, it is, negation is the process through which uh, 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 the power and influence of the colonizer and the uh, capitalist, colonial, uh, colonial capitalist uh, is negated and replaced by a higher uh, positive level of development uh, by the colonized ourselves. Uh, it is the process through which the past is being replaced and relegated to history. It is the process of creating the future. That is what we are engaged in when we look at uh, uh, this. And then I think it's really important to understand that while many organizations uh, subsequent to uh, the defeat of our revolution have been engaged uh, primarily uh, in talking about and complaining about and even demonstrating and shooting at uh, the oppressor uh, that uh, they, in many instances, this is done without 
uh, with the assumption that we simply go rush in and take over uh, what the colonizer or the capitalist has produced. And of course, revolutions do mean that. We, we take uh, uh, what is possessed by the colonizer, we expropriate the expropriators. That's part of what our reparations demand reflects uh, in, the, in the African People Socialist Party. Uh, we take what uh, they have, the people have to have possession of, of our own resources, and that, that is currently uh, primarily held in the, in the hands of the uh, oppressor, of the colonizer. But uh, uh, we recognize that the, the struggle that all human beings in, are engaged in uh, is the struggle for, to produce life and, and to reproduce life. And how is life produced? Uh, life is produced, obviously, uh, 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 by men and women uh, entering into relationships that uh, result uh, in birth of children, uh, reproducing ourselves uh, as, uh, as a species, as people, that's one aspect of it. But another important aspect of the production, reproduction of life uh, is uh, being able to feed, clothe, and house ourselves and the ongoing development of that process that becomes uh, uh, with uh, every new, with every reiteration, it becomes a, a higher level of uh, a higher capacity, except uh, what has happened is imperialist white power uh, attacked uh, uh, Africa and African people and many of the peoples around the world. And it means that we no longer produce and reproduce life uh, for ourselves, we produce and reproduce life for white people, white power. And uh, so this discussion that we're having is one uh, that is exciting to African people if we haven't even fully thought out what this means in terms of science and philosophy, et cetera, we know that it's meaningful for black people to own and control uh, things in our community. We hear that all the time, that uh, one of the problems we have is we don't have any businesses. We don't own and control uh, what it is that we need uh, to exist. <laughs> and uh, so the party has taken up that uh, in a very serious way. And we're going to talk about that today because we recognize that capitalism rests upon a foundation or a pedestal of colonialism and uh, then the, and a, a fundamental uh, component of uh, colonial domination uh, is the, the fact that the colonizer has undermined our capacity or colonizers undermine the capacity of the, colon, of the colonized uh, for self-reliance. And this is part of the problem that we are dealing with. And finally, uh, socialism, uh, I wanted to say this because there are some people who recognize uh, what we do in terms of the institutions that we've created, economic institutions. And they say, uh, some we might even hear critics of that because uh, what do you mean that you're starting businesses and what have you, and does that make uh, you a capitalist? But we that's because of ignorance of capitalism. Uh, in all so many circles. Capitalism uh, is a social system uh, and it is uh, uh, a social system where uh, the, the mode of production is the mode of production that uh, has come uh, into existence uh, that where uh, the means of production is owned uh, by people who don't produce. Uh, uh, you have this profound contradiction where the workers uh, labor uh, is exploited. It, that's what exploitation means, that the value of the label is expropriated and uh, is now in the possession of people who don't produce anything. So you have socialized production uh, by the working people of toiling masses, but you have private ownership. You don't have socialized ownership, you just have socialized production. So the capitalist class owns and controls the means of production. The workers don't own and control the means of production. That's owned by the capitalists who, who, and the colonial capitalists who don't work. And, the, and that extends all the way to the land on which we uh, exist. Uh, uh, or or uh, an entire continent, we're talking about Africa. You look at all the Americas and the final analysis, it's connected to ownership by imperial white power. So that's what we are contesting. And so we are engaged in a revolution that expects that the workers will have to take power. The workers will have to take uh, those uh, uh, institutions that's, in, that's controlled uh, uh, by uh, the colonial capitalist system. But the part of the process, part of the strategic effort that we are making to win power uh, is, to, uh, is, is, is to begin to uh, give workers power over the means of production by creating those means of production by doing that ourselves. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today, how the party is solving this incredible problem 
so creating worker owned and it's worker owned no not individual workers uh, but the it's worker owned in the sense that the african people socialist party uh, is a party of the advanced attachment is a party of the working class and and that ownership uh, begins is conferred uh, on on the working class through the party itself so and that's when you got socialism when the working class becomes the ruling class uh, when the working class becomes custodians of the means of production and uh you might not even make 15 dollars an hour there's nobody working in an institution that we control that makes 15 dollars an hour i don't think so that's what bernie promises you uh, but what we promise is a whole new social system uh, that overturns capitalism and exploitation uh, that uh, that takes the white man takes white power uh, 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 away from uh, authority in our lives and assuming the authority ourselves and so that's that's part of what it is that we want to talk about today and I'm extremely uh, uh, happy to uh, be able to uh, uh, turn this over uh, because comrade uh, deputy chair owner Zinaisha Teller has assumed the responsibility uh, as custodian of the parties of the people's uh, resources and not just the people's resources this custodian of the aspirations of the people to be self-determining to be self-governing to have our own resources and translating that uh, from the political reports that we've made at every Congress that we make at uh, 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 in our plenary process taking this uh, translating it creating the institutions uh, uh, that the party unites around and around which we attempt to unite masses of working in uh, African people uh, within the United States and everywhere we are located. We're looking for the ability to establish uh, this independent economic activity, self-owned, self-reliant activity wherever uh, we are located as a party. We want to take it everywhere. We want to take the party everywhere and we want to make this as a an active and dynamic component of the struggle that we engaged in, because we do believe, and we say all the time, uh, that politic is simply concentrated economics. And the reason that's not obvious uh, in most instances is because African people do not immediately have uh, economic power. So when, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, economics, it's a dream when we talk about it, and, and often it doesn't get talked about because we have no a uh, political uh, strategy, a political understanding, a political theory uh, that expresses the fact that uh, food, clothing, and shelter is fundamental to every, the activity of human beings in society now always has been, and the growing the capacity uh, to make that happen, food, clothing, and shelter is central to, to everything. And so uh, that's what we engaged in. That's what we are discussing. That's what the party uh, has been working to build uh, since its inception. And uh, we have a long history of, uh, of working to create uh, economic independence, economic capacity do, to create the ability for the people to be able to feed, clothing, house ourselves. And we're trying to, uh, as I said earlier, uh, bring the African masses all around the world into this process. We got to take back Africa. Africa is ours. We want every square inch of Africa. And that is fundamental. Uh, along with the African people ourselves who are held hostage under colonial custody, uh, these are key elements of the productive uh, uh, forces uh, necessary uh, to, uh, to create the kind of life that we want. We're fighting for our people to have a better material life. That's what the politics of this is about. That's what the political struggles that we talk about is to take that uh, to free the productive forces, to free the land of our people, to free the people so that we can be productive on the land and create the kinds of instruments of production necessary. That's what the politic of the African People's Socialist Party is about. That's what African internationalism is about. That's what this discussion that we're going to be holding right now uh, is about as well. Director Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you, Chairman. And we'll go ahead now and turn it over to Deputy Chair Ona Zene Shatella. Crew, Deputy Chair. I think you're muted, Comrade. Uhuru, can people hear me now? Uhuru, I just want to uh, just really express my appreciation and thank the Chairman for that introduction. And I just really want to welcome the National Central Committee uh, members uh, to, this, to this discussion because I think that I've worked with probably every one of you around economic development. 
And today um, I will be summing up the history and the political basis of the party's economic front and its strategy role in our revolutionary struggle as the African working class. So I'll be doing a presentation today on the history of the economic work. So just bear with me. I'm gonna be taking you way back. You're gonna be seeing pictures of people uh, when they were very, very young. You'd be like, who is that? That's, oh, that's Bakri, you know? So uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. So the African People's Socialist Party is the instrument today needed to make the revolution. Building the party is our number one goal. The party worked to build African self-reliance and economic development programs and institutions are part of the strategy for dual and contending power with the bourgeoisie white state. The ch chairman of Mali Chatella writes, and I quote, when we talk about the struggle for self-reliance for economic development, we are talking about the ability to produce and reproduce material life. We must begin to build our own power. Many revolutions around the world created dual and contending power in the process of winning national liberation. Chairman Amalia Chatella sums up in an uneasy equilibrium, the African revolution versus parasitic capitalism that the economic work and the political work are one. Strategically geared towards the conquest of political power as part of the struggle for dual and contending power with the dying imperialism. This is the basis for all the organizations of our movement. Founded in 1972, the African People's Socialist Party was born during the brutal repression that destroyed the blight revolution of the 1960s. Having not been part of that defeat, the party represents a revolutionary continuum, linking the immediate past of defeat with the present and the future. The party was born as a revolutionary organization that moved from one level of struggle to another higher level of struggle. From the party's inception, it has always rooted the work in the struggle for economic self-reliance. Living in collectives, picking oranges in Florida, African Connection bookstore in Louisville, Kentucky, and the Florida Bike Voice newspaper that was in Gainesville, Florida. One of the key campaigns of the party's formative years was the campaign to free Desi Woods from a Georgia, Georgia prison that was defending herself and Cheryl Todd from a white man who attempted to rape and kill them. The defined and definite campaign slogan of free Desi Woods, smash colonial violence, characterized the most important, clearly anti-colonial movement of the period and won international solidarity with the struggle for total independence from US domestic colonialism. Uhura Foods had its birth during this campaign as the Uhura movement members began selling food at the San Francisco Gay Day to raise resources for this campaign. It was during this period that the party defined the term for principal solidarity from white people and formed the African People's Solidarity Committee, an organization of white people who worked directly under the leadership of our party in the struggle against colonial oppression as we defined it. The party struggled also for a solidarity movement to move away from charity, just carrying out fundraisers occasionally based on a campaign or a specific project. In 1995, the lines were drawn. APSC united with its mission to build, organize, consistent material solidarity to the people and to the party based on winning reparations from the white community. APSC was assigned to develop several party-owned economic institutions such as Uhura Foods and Pies and Uhura Furniture and Collectible Stores that are known today throughout the world as examples of African community economic institutions. During the same period, the party wage campaigns, build institutions and organized with the goal to bring the African working class back into political life. At the first tribunal of reparations for African people in the US, the African working class tried the US government on the international law and found the US guilty of genocide 
on reparations for $4.1 trillion for unpaid labor alone. In the 12 following years, tribunals and local courts were held throughout the country. During the Oakland, California years, the party's Black Community Control Committee organized the homeless population to liberate and administer Uhura Park, a tent city for the homeless. We occupied a city-owned abandoned house with the slogan, empty houses and homeless Black people go together. The party deepened the struggle for community control by winning 32,000 signers to put the community control of housing initiative on the Oakland ballot called Measure O, representing urban land reform based on the socialist premise that housing is a human right. The Hura Bakery and Cafe and Catering opened up as a showcase economic development institution bringing Ahura Foods and Pies to a new level. The party brought the Bobby Hutton African People's Freedom Clinic to the people one of its first programs for community health of uh, community control of health. The Oakland Uhura House became the center for waging nonstop campaigns to complete the blight revolution of the 1960s. Uhura houses gave voice to representatives from oppressed people from throughout the world, the FSLN, San Anisas, National Liberation Movement, people of Venezuela, and the Mexican National Liber uh, Liberation Movement in the U.S. Union de Barrio. In 1991, the people, the party formed the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement to defend the democratic rights of the African community. MPDM has waged constant mass campaigns against police murders and containment of African people. 18 years ago, before Ferguson police uh, repression was exposed to the world. MPDOM was fighting the battle to expose the police as the occupying force in the African community. In 1996, after two white St. Petersburg, Florida cops murdered 18 year old African Tyrone Lewis, the African community rose up in a fierce rebellion that pushed the state back. Uhura's Black Gym of our own originally located in St. Petersburg, Florida at the Uhura House we relocated that into our own building and we renamed it the All People's Tyrone Lewis Community Gym, addressing the health for African people as the colonial oppression. From day one, the party has created independent African media such as Burning Spear newspaper and the Burning Spear publications, all representing the party engaging in the war of ideas, giving a voice to the African working class in contention with the white ruling class media. Uhuranews.com and internet Uhura Radio increased the party's capacity to reach and connect the, to the African world. Following the Fifth Party Congress in 2010, the Office of the, office of the Chairman assumed full strategic direction for all the party's economic work. Chairman and myself began by concretizing the Chairman's vision of an economic entity that would will build economic development and commerce for and between African people worldwide. We call this bold initiative Black Star Industries. APS myself immediately began the process of branding the party's economic institutions and enterprises with the goal to build what we have and reproduce the institutions everywhere the party was located. What makes all of these programs and institutions examples of dual power is that we are led by the African People's Socialist Party, planting the seed of an emerging independent African economy. We transformed the main event room of Aquaba Hall, a center of African community economic and social cultural events. We opened up Uhura Jiko Community Commercial Kitchen in St. Petersburg, putting the means of production in the hands of the movement and the community. We consolidated Uhura Foods and Pies on the Black Star Industries, bringing more African leaders and volunteers in participation in the party's economic development work. Uhura Foods and Pies is moving towards the vision to carry out the party's strategic aim of controlling the means of food production, distribution, and land. Uhura Tours coordinated events taking the chairman and members of APSP on a 30,000 mile journey in 2013 throughout Africa, US, Europe, 
and the U.S., where the chairman presented his political report and won the urgency of building the party of the African working class. Building the African nation united around the theory of African internationalism. As Chairman Amali states, to what end? Self determination and self government for our people has to be the main goal. The Uhura movement entered 2014 on the heels of our historic six party Congress, which adopted Chairman Amali Ishatullah political report, voted on resolutions, elected leadership, and set their agenda for a worldwide African revolution. The Great Leap Forward campaign deepened the influence of the party in the Oakland Bay Area, created as a short-term campaign to unite the Oakland movement under one umbrella campaign to build Black Star Industries and Ahura Foods and Pies, and established the second Ahura House, um, Aquava Hall to welcome the community into a newly refurbished Ahura House. We have developed our institutions as models that can be reproduced everywhere the party is with manuals, policies, procedures, and protocols. Same vision, same goals through community rentals, a Quapa Hall would be contributed economically to, con to creating APDF programs. New store manager and who uh, furniture Oakland mobilized staff and volunteers to surpass 2013 sale goals who are furniture benefits from the leadership of the Oakland campaign and having additional APDF institutions in the same city, Aquaba Hall in our backyard community gardens. Who are furniture and collectibles and built in Philadelphia bust out of the central city location after 19 years and relocated to the much larger space on North Broad Street and historical African community in Philadelphia. And despite having to close for the move being Without electricity for eight days and closing for snow blizzards, UFC surpassed the previous year in sales. The party utilized its long-term institutions of Uhura Furniture and Philly to deepen its influence in the Northeast. Upstairs at the Uhura Furniture, we host MPDON regional meetings and the Black is Bike Coalition annual conferences. The All African People's Development and Empowerment Project showcased what is possible with African self-determination. They installed a 20,000 gallon, excuse me, a 2,000 gallon water tank to sustain the Houston, Texas community garden. While Houston, while Huntsville, Alabama has a network of 10 collected backyard gardens. Bernie Spear Media created publishing of the chairman's political report to the Sixth Party Congress in Uneasy Equilibrium, the African Revolution versus Parasitic Cap capitalism. So we live stream studies by Chairman Omali Shatella and other significant events. And also we held telethons. The Office of the Deputy Chair brings economic development strategies to every department and organization. The Hura Flea Market in Philadelphia become the training ground for the party to reproduce the One Africa, One Nation marketplace in the Northeast and the Southeast regions and develop African leadership coordinating um, 14 years long, you know, we've been there in Clark Park uh, in Philadelphia. The Office of the Deputy Chair would apt up leadership attending NARS conference to secure professional training for opening Zenzile consignment, uh, revolutionary confidence style. They started out with the uh, online auction benefit to raise money to open Zenzile. Through Ahura Tours and AhuraNews.com, the party will expand the Africans' One Billion Strong donor campaign so that every African and progressive person can contribute to building a liberated African economy. Ahura Solidarity Movement takes to the streets throughout the years, challenging the white community to take a principled stand in solidarity with African self-determination. The party stands with the historic community of Ferguson under the slogan, reinforcements are on the way and sends Chairman Omali Shatella and other party organizers to Ferguson, bringing African internationalism and organization. As part of the party strategy to build in St. Louis, I was sent to consolidate a building for an Ahura house. I came to St. Louis on June 16th with the understanding that I would be there for only one week to close on a building that the OD ODC had identified as the site for our new St. Louis Uhura House in Aquaba Hall. Within a few days, I determined that I had to stay after seeing the number of boarded up 
empty and abandoned houses, I immediately investigated the different programs for property acquisition throughout the city of St. Louis. The major focus was Ward 21, the community where the Hoover House was located, because we wanted to have a concentrated presence of the party in one location. And although the Office of the Deputy Chair goal for 2017 was to build what we had and to make what we have productive, we could not pass up the opportunity to make the chairman's vision a reality as he defined in the political report, putting revolution back on the agenda again, the APSC, the APSP plenary January, 2017. And I quote, Africans must be influenced to combine with each other to begin grabbing up properties that have been abandoned and degraded in our community as part of the process of chasing us out, undermining property values and opening up the door to vultures from the colonizing nation to easy, cheap acquisitions. We must help the people to understand that groups of Africans coming together can build to acquire property in the community through economic cooperation. We can also create housing and other kinds of economic cooperatives. This can be a part of a foundation for cooperative socialist influence economics. Our, po our political task is to teach the people to be contemporaries of any kind of dependency." End quote. From day one, since we purchased the Uhura House on West Florissant Avenue and began the renovation process, the imagination and the conference, conference of the masses have grown, not believing before that we could create something like this ourselves. The party economic institutions are not only significant for what they bring directly to the party and the party related organizations and committees, they are also important for what they bring to the masses of our people beyond the possibility of employment. Our economic institutions are important for what they represent to the psyche of the Africans who may have lost collective self-confidence as a result of cru cruelty of colonial capitalism that denies Africans the ability to initi easily initiate successful life creating or economic ventures. Our economic institution speaks to the possibilities of Africans to achieve economic self-reliance to be in charge of our own affairs. The Black Power Blueprint is about the people, not just a campaign. It's about the party liberating territory and self-governing. So we have the, uh, the Black Power Blueprint, we have the Uhura House and Aquava Hall. Uh, we purchased the LR, uh, LRA properties next door. We demolished them and created the outdoor venue of the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace and Garden. Um, we have the future site of Uhura Jiko Commercial Kitchen, uh, Uhura Cafe and Bakery, Outdoor Venue and Herb Garden, and the home of Uhura Foods and Pies for the regional and national distribution and a training center for the African Independence Workforce Program. We also purchased a fourplex apartment for housing for the African Independent Workforce Program. We purchased and demolished a corner building for our future com uh, community basketball courts. We purchased two other LRA properties down the block from the Uhura House on West Flores and for future development. The Buy Black Power um, is the African People's Socialist Party taking the strategy to create economic activity that is not simply expired by an expiration of an individual wealth, but that recognizes itself in the struggle for economic self-determination. It also brings the political consciousness of self-reliance. Bye Bye Power answer the question of how the African community will feed, clothes, and house ourselves with goods and services sourced from and or produced by African merchants. In doing so, we're building an independent global economy. So we also had our Congress um, Vanguard, um, and then we um, also, Zinzile is growing as the economic African hub in, in uh, the city of Huntsville, Alabama. In the works, we have carrying out the regional strategy with the Hula Foods and Pies and the One Africa, One Nation Marketplaces. Uh, we also come, have coming up is Uhura Wabingi. Uhura Wabingi uh, is to provide microloans 
to the organization within the Uhuru movement to help assist with sustainable funding for creating economic development for special projects, fundraising and any other projects that would assist in forwarding our economic capacity for self-reliance for the African working class and the revolution. It's a commitment to empower our organization through business development training and accessible capital assistance of microloan program. We wanna provide business tools to remove the barriers that hinders development of success and sustainable projects. So this is gonna be strengthening our entire organization by building partner partnerships within that increase resources and allows the organization to grow internally and externally. Black Star Industries is bringing Uzi and Decolonies uh, into um, its leadership. And I'm just really um, announced on uh, a couple of days ago that, that um, Uzi and Decolonies is now a legal LLC entity. So now we're uh, you know, growing past programs and now we're actually developing businesses now for them. Aniba. Aniba is an association of the African-owned businesses, institutions, enterprises, and entrepreneurs, as well as other businesses that support African self-determination and economic um, independence. So its mission is to transfer business skills and experience to existing and are expiring Black entrepreneurs that is designed to enhance our community's capacity for achieving economic self-reliance and our struggle for Black national liberation under the leadership of the African working class. So um, in this period, we created the ad hoc structure called the People's War uh, Against Colonial Virus, which is led by um, Dr. Aisha Fields. Uh, with this ad hoc structure, we had phone banking, which included uh, the NTU Volunteer Brigade Program. We also um, initiated uh, a, a, a grants program as well, where we were helping people to um, fill out the applications for all the benefits that they so-called benefits that they they said that uh, people could get their stimulus check, uh, unemployment, uh, any other kind of benefits that the um, the white state uh, capitalist uh, government was trying to hand out. We help our comrades and people and our staff uh, uh, go through that process. So in closing, as I stated in my political report to the 2020 plenary, we are at a point of no return. We are on a mission. We must understand that the political significance of our economic institutions and campaigns, together they represent the unity of theory and practice. Our theory calls for the total liberation and unification of Africa and African people worldwide. Liberation and unification are necessary for freeing up the productive forces of Africa and our people. Our, ac our economic institutions represent the practical face of our African internationalist theory of liberation. We must be able to see everything we built as one single seamless anti-colonial international economy stemming from one revolutionary philosophy. Colonial capitalism is a parasite that feeds off the resources of the colonized. When the colonized African working class builds our own economy, we are carrying out the revolutionary act. We negate the colonial economy and replaces it with our own. This act of creating our own independent anti-colonial economy deprives the parasite of the host that is necessary for its very existence. The African working class has to be self-governing. This is the political theory that gives meaning to our economic work. That is what we mean when we say that politics is concentrated economics. Our political line is reflected in our economic work and our economic work is tied to the defeat of colonialism and neo-colonialism. This is the practical application of our political theory. Uhuru. So that's my presentation. So I'm gonna just shoot it back to uh, Director Akile to open it up. Uhura comrades, thank you. Uhuru, <clears throat> Deputy Chair, what an incredible presentation and really appreciate us being able to go through the history of the party's economic development work and 
almost like let like less than 40 minutes that's incredible <laughs> um, you had me on timer <laughs> I, was, I mean it was just it was incredible to see and i mean everything that you talked about because I mean, when you deal, talked about the political campaigns and how the economic institutions and how we were able to advance the political work when um, you know these institutions continue to develop, I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And anybody who sees that, um, you know, has to see this, um, you know, just the work of the African Socialist Party. Every time they come into any of our institutions, every time they come, um, they step into one of our Quaba halls or buy a piece of furniture, or buy, a, um, you know, a, a, a Jamaican jerk wrap from um, the, <laughs> the marketplace, uh, the, the markets, um, you have to know that you're dealing with African self-determination. And that's just really, really powerful. So we do want to go ahead now and open it up to, um, all the panelists that you see here, which um, th these are the leaders of the African People's Socialist Party and of the Uhuru Movement. And of course, we have Chairman Amalia Shetela, Deputy Chair Onizene Shetela. We also have present with us Secretary General Louis de Kinshasa, the African Socialist International. Um, myself, the Director of Agitation and Propaganda, Akile Anai. We have with us President Kalambaye Andanet, who is the international president of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. We have Director Aisha Fields, who is the director of the All African People's Development Empowerment Project. President Yejide Odumila, who is the president of the African National Women's Organization. And we have our regional representatives of the African People's Socialist Party under the leadership, we're going to the leadership of the National Director of Organization, that's Chimaranga Salabao. And our regional leaders, starting from the West Coast, Bakri Olatunji, Midwest, we have Malika Alexander, Northern, we have Matum and Yobe, and in the Southern region, where I'm from, um, we have Comrade Kobina Bantashango, and we also have the chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee, which you heard about in uh, Deputy Chair's presentation, we have with us Chairwoman Penny Hess. So, who comrades, so now we want to go ahead and open this up um, for discussion. I mean, you just heard this dynamic presentation, so I'm sure that we have a lot that we can contribute to um, what has been said today. So, um, <clears throat> Uhuru. Uhuru, I just want to first of all salute my leadership, Chairman Omali Eshatella, for the brilliant overview this morning, and appreciate my leadership as well, and Deputy Chair Onizene Eshatella for that brilliant, absolutely stunning um, economic report. Uh, these institutions are so fundamental to the functioning and uh, winning of African people to have politi political power in our own hands. And I just really appreciate everything that was laid out. I just wanted to say that, you know, we talk about, uh, my name is Bakri Olatunji, and I'm the West Coast Regional Representative of the African People's Socialist Party. And being um, the West Coast Regional Representative, I just want to say that that is of the United States. And we represent part of the US front of the worldwide African revolution. We are tied to the African Socialist International, which is the African People's Socialist Party throughout the world. And that on the West Coast of the US, we play a critical role in the whole economic piece that was just laid out. And the regional strategy you know, was put down to put dual power into practice building the party regions as political economic hubs, such as what we are doing and trying to build out here in the West Coast. Um, we're talking about building the West Coast Regional Committee through uh, the NTU Volunteer Brigade, um, the Uhuru House that we have in Oakland right now. We want to use that and build it um, and model it as what we have in St. Petersburg, Florida and in St. Louis, Missouri. We want to utilize the Aquaba Hall, uh, the Uhura House that we have in Oakland right now that's been there ooh, since the 80s. Uh, it's been there quite a while. It's a, a mainstay in African community. And we want to get this building up and running. We need to bring it up to cold standards. Uh, we want to rent Aquaba Hall out and the Uhura Houses to bring in resources there in Oakland, California. We want to be able to hold events similar to what we see happening in St. Louis, Missouri with a lot of the uh, poetry nights, uh, cultural nights activity that you can see happening in St. Louis. We wanna replicate that process right now in Oakland, California. And as what was said earlier, we wanna distribute all the products of uh, uh, black of our bag, black power um, 
products, uh, Uzi and uh, the Colonnade. We want to open the Uhuru House up to that. And we talk about Uhuru Foods and Pies, which, which basically began in Oakland, California, where we've been on the ground for over 40 years building dual and contending power institutions. And I just really, really appreciated that report uh, that, that um, I did see some old pictures there too, by the way, of some people I didn't recognize. I saw my beard before it became white. And uh, we wanna really make the Uhura House a distribution center for Uhura Foods and Pies as well. And I'm looking forward to getting back in that backyard to chop down some of the overgrowth so we can get this garden project back up. I've been in discussion with people recently and we are going to take this garden project, this uh, Abdeb garden on. We're gonna rival what they got down in Huntsville. So I'm throwing down right now with some socialist competition. Uh, we coming for you. And uh, just to let you know that uh, we are gonna build this regional capacity, the work that we're looking at that uh, the chairman laid out, um, you know, talking about the need for economic development with DC owner concretized through her report and put on the ground. And out here in the West, we're going to carry this damn thing out. So I just wanted to contribute to the discussion and appreciate my leadership. Uhuru. 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 Mm -hmm. My name is Malika Alexander, and I represent the Midwest region in the United States. And um, that was in, first of all, I want to salute Chairman O'Malley Yeshitella, and I want to salute DC Ona for that incredible report, um, always challenging us to move forward. Um, our, we're kind of like the newest front in that we're here in St. Louis, but we have everything here with the Black Power Blueprint on the ground here. We have the, um, the uh, International Office of Impedum here. So we have a lot of political action coming out, out from here because we're located right in the heart of where the people are in North St. Louis, which is dealing with a whole lot of gentrification mm -hmm. and different things like that. And so these economic projects, just to see as the people see these projects coming forth, like the, the One African, One Nation Marketplace, as people see it growing and see it being developed before their eyes, it, it establishes a new kind of hope and a new kind of um, mm -hmm. something in the community that, you know, the community can come back to life and we mm -hmm. can take power and we can, and we try to keep it before the people that this is not just ours, this mm -hmm. is all of ours, this mm -hmm. belongs to us. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, then, you know, even people that are on the street begin to take ownership. And, um, you know, we have the red, black and green out there. And a lot of us have the red, black and green in front of our house. So you get to see that consistency all throughout mm -hmm. the area. And so, um, on this economic front, you know, bringing the Hulu foods and pies here to the Midwest. Um, just all of the work that's going on, the poetry events and different things that One African, One Nation Marketplace is gonna be such a tool to be able to have outdoor concerts and outdoor events and stuff just to bring, mm -hmm. bring back um, people coming together in the community. And, you know, all the things that are unique to us as a people, you know, the celebration aspect, the fellowship aspect. And so the party has really been, you know, on top of that. And that's why this report and that's why this um, this front of our work is so dynamic because what, it, what it's already done is begun to transform. And so I cannot see it doing anything but continue to do that. And that's why it's a great time to be a part of this and be a part of this work and be a part of what, what the APSP is doing. Uhuru. 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 Um, this is Columbia Antoinette and I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm the international president of the International People Democratic Uhuru Movement. And I really want to echo and appreciate this report as well. And just like all the historical history of the party. And I, I just didn't know if like chairman um, could elaborate because what I was thinking about when I was listening to this report of um, two, two of the campaigns that was mentioned, the uh, 
Jesse Wood and um, when uh, chairman came to Ferguson. And throughout each, each one of these campaigns, you see the political and economic meet each other and how we have always have a to what end. And I know that that's what, you know, really draws me to this party um, and this movement doing Ferguson because I seen that it always had like, it always was taken, you know, taking us somewhere as a people that it wasn't just protesting, um, saying hands up, don't shoot or just protesting for protest sake. And even the Desi Wood campaign, you know, at that period, you know, uh, where the revolution, like uh, in your report, was defeated and the party could not let the feminists and the white left, you know, take this struggle and make it be about anything else but colonialism. And so I just think, you know, I, I just thought that was really, really powerful, this whole presentation, this amazing party and all the work that it does and how everything that we do, even if we're talking about the Black Power Blueprint or we're talking about Oakland or we're talking about in, uh, what we're doing in South Africa, it all connects us. It's all um, for the African nation. And so I just really, really, really salute and appreciate this party, um, your leadership, Deputy Chair um, and Chairman Omali Yeshitela and the whole Central Committee, Uhuru. Well, let me just speak to that briefly. I thought that was something really important that Comrade uh, President uh, Kalambayi just mentioned. Uh, for years, for years and years and years, I mean, you hear now, you know, every now and then you hear uh, someone under pressure from the party in our movement about to what end, uh, what, are you, what are you fighting for? Like, uh, uh, you hear them say words like colonialism, uh, but for years and years and years, we were out there alone um, waging this anti-colonial struggle. We even ended up having to fight uh, with the elements of the Black Panther Party in, in uh, 1976 around this whole question because they had concluded because of uh, Newton Huey had written uh, something on uh, 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 communalism, uh, some kind of communalism uh, which suggested that the nations no longer existed. Therefore, according to this interpretation that we ran into while we were making the struggle against colonialism, uh, uh, colonies, you know, the whole thing about nations don't exist anymore. So the, to say that we we're colonized didn't make any sense because we were all this interconnected communities, et cetera, under how imperialism had developed. The point I'm making is that we were very, very alone for a long period of time. And, and the, the, the defeat of our revolution meant that there was a defeat of the struggle for self-determination. And they, that was, that was no longer a part of the agenda. And so there was a retreat, even by people who had previously held up uh, this, uh, this uh, stance around uh, colonialism and self-determination. And so uh, racism is the thing that had now come to existence. This group, uh, you know, friend, the guy who was, I was really close to, uh, who at the time was known as Stokely Carmichael, and their organization, uh, the organization that they created subsequent, had come up with saying that the, the, the struggle is against uh, racism and imperialism. Uh, racism, you know, like racism, which is the struggle is against this idea uh, and this uh, and imperialism. And so this ongoing struggle to finding colonialism, something that we've been engaged in since the 1970s and something that resonated uh, during the period of the 60s, uh, but then had been destroyed with the defeat of the Black Revolution is something that we pursued and fought and fought and fought. And that's how the Desi Woods, we took on the Desi Woods struggle. Uh, you had the feminists who would defend, who uh, would, there's a woman, Joanne Little, uh, who had South Carolina, North Carolina, who uh, had uh, uh, escaped from jail. Uh, she was locked up in this small uh, jail. And, and, and when uh, one morning they came there and the sheriff was dead with his white man uh, uh, with, uh, with his pants around his ankle and semen all over the place and an ice pick uh, protruding from him. And Joanne Little was gone. You know, she had escaped and she had killed this cracker racist in the jail and had got away. So that was a, a huge campaign. And, uh, uh, you know, feminists and everybody jumped on that campaign because feminism is one of the, one of the uh, uh, petty bourgeois expressions that uh, tried to take the space away uh, from the revolution. It was the petty bourgeoisie. And so here we have these feminists, you know, talking about the rightful woman for self-defense. 
And of course, rape of black women, historical. I mean, that's, you know, it's historical. And so you're talking about it's colonial violence. It's the, that's what we were fighting against. And so that has set the terms for what, how this movement is gonna happen. And then we did Desi Woods. And so the feminists tried to jump onto that movement right away. And with the same slogan, we say, no, no, no. This is the struggle about the smash colonial violence. Mm -hmm. colonial violence. That's what we're looking at. And the, the struggle to free Desi Woods has to contribute to the struggle for national liberation of black people. It's the best what it has to do. And we fought that. And we ended up, of course, uh, uh, we won some people. I mean, many people who are in the solidarity movement today came in through that struggle around the Desi Woods case. And so we, but they wouldn't be here if we did and let it be a feminist movement. They'd be feminists, where some of them started. They'd be in these other places, but the struggle against colonialism had to be made manifest. That's why the political line is important. It's critical. And so you don't, you're not just doing stuff, we fight for the political line. And that sometimes that gets involved in our meetings and in our struggles and what have you, the, the political line. It seems innocuous, it doesn't seem, well, you mean the same thing. That's what people used to say when we get engaged with struggles of, of with this, they had a line that the struggle is, is against uh, uh, racism and white supremacy or something to that effect. You know, no, 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 no. Uh, the struggle is against colonialism. Uh, and, and this is a white group saying this is what it's about, oh, racism and, and white and male supremacy. No, 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 no. The struggle is against colonialism because you can fight against white and male supremacy and join this white group. You understand? That's where you, you support. No, it's against colonialism. That means you got to join under the leadership of the colonized and not, you know, the, those who claim that they're representing, you know, those who are colonized, right? So, I mean, this has been an ongoing struggle. So the, the struggle for free Desi Woods was in one aspect, one manifestation of the absolute need to fight for the line, fight for the political line in the world. And uh, that's why we're here today having this discussion it really is because we had to make those struggles to get to where we are. And now the space is ours. It's our space. Now the revolution has conquered. The African working class has its own revolutionary party and the African revolutionary party is now talking about self-determination, self-reliance and uh, political report uh, and the discussion that you've just, uh, that we are experiencing now under the leadership of deputy chair. So I've spoken a lot, but I'm hoping that the other people want to contribute to this discussion and. Uh, and there may be questions that people may want to ask about uh, what you've just heard uh, coming from uh, the deputy chair, Uhuru. Yes, sir. Well. This is uh, Louise uh, Kinshasa. I'm talking from uh, London. I'm the uh, African Socialist, uh, um, African Socialist International uh, uh, Secretary General, basically. I just want to once uh, we need to. Uh, salute the uh, leadership and vision uh, uh, of the chairman, uh, Amari Stella, uh, because uh, we can always see uh, concretely uh, what uh, is the meaning of uh, political and uh, economic uh, one. I uh, want definitely to recognize as the brilliance of, uh, uh, of DC owner, uh, you know, when we say vanguard up, uh, you can always see the presentation this year has done. That's just, it's not just profound, deep, but it's also beautiful. You know, you just want to look at it. It's like art, you know, and, um, you know, uh, it's just just great. So I, I just want to salute her for, for that. And I also want to salute my uh, comrade uh, from the Central Committee uh, who are on this uh, panel. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's a great, uh, because uh, there are many things uh, you can see definitely uh, the uh, the difference between the ministers of new colonial countries in the Caribbean and Africa, uh, and also in the US, you can see uh, ministers of economics and uh, their president. They get us into debts. You know they don't fight for reparation, and you can see the chairman has mentioned the political line. So we have a political line that is in opposition to the political line for neo-colonialists in Africa, all of them, because their political line, you know, legalized uh, getting Africa into, you know, constant day. And, uh, you know, we were fighting for uh, preparation. And uh, you have seen uh, for yourself that uh, freedom movement, it also means economic movement. 
you know, uh, when you look at Africa, you look at the Caribbean, you look at the US and Europe, you see all these African politicians, the African petit bourgeoisie, they just have a political movement organized around elections. You don't see an economic movement. If they do economic movement, it means just tying us permanently to imperialism. When economic movement means we're negating the power of economics of the uh, imperialists. And that's what you, you saw when you look at their presentation uh, this year and I, has done. Not only we are a political movement, we are freedom movement, we are economic movement, we are also a cultural movement, you know, because we create the basis for African arts uh, to be free from uh, predators. People come to our community to, to steal our poetry and music and dance and things like that. So we don't have to go outside. People can come to our own base in our own rural house at Quabba Hall and uh, watch what we're doing. You know, basically we say uh, sell to everyone and uh, buy from uh, each other. So we're creating the foundation for all that. So culture has to be uh, sitting on economics and, uh, and the freedom uh, uh, movement. So we're creating the foundation uh, uh, for that. So we don't wait for election to give anybody promises. No, we say join the struggle today. As we, we always say, there is no unemployment in who movement. It's full time, you know? So it is an organization where nobody can say they have nothing to do, it, you know? So that's some people should join today. If you're looking for full employment, join the, uh, uh, the, uh, the movement today. And uh, we are, uh, you saw the swagger, you know, with the presentation. Uh, you saw, uh, you heard about the training uh, we provided. So we, you know, it, so you basically see the workers becoming managers in a capitalist economy uh, when we work for the parasite. You know, there is a split between the intellectual work, the managerial work, and the workers' work. So the workers' work is a labor work. You're supposed to do things, you know, get into training, you know. But now when you join uh, the movement, uh, you are on a constant growth, intellectual growth. You know, uh, everything will grow, your confidence, your swagger, you know, everything. So we need managers, African working class managers, African working class intellectuals, and uh, the Black Power uh, blueprint, the Black Power movement basically we, we developing gives you the basis for you to become uh, a manager for the working class, not to accumulate capital for yourself. And that's a, that's a profound difference. Our movement, you know, and the leadership of, of our party basically is the only uh, movement, is the only economic process, uh, if you look at the African nation, that represents a collective success because we are accumulating capital as a collective. We are not accumulating capital as an individual. That's what we see in Africa all the time. You, you hear stories, this, this, that, this, that, that, million disappears. No, 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 we don't have to, of course, Opportunities come to our movement to steal our resources. Yeah, we do have uh, these opportunities. That's an ongoing uh, struggle. The uh, more you join, the, you know, uh, less likely it will be possible for these opportunities to do what they're doing. But we are for economic development, a proper one, accumulating capital. The capital stays in the black community and flowing into the black community as the opposite. Capital flowing out of the black community under the leadership of the Obama, the uh, Butu, the Museveni, all these guys and, and people are like uh, that. So we are here basically uh, in uh, Europe and uh, you will see for yourself uh, whatever region we're trying to build would need to be emulated, would need to be reproduced. So we are also involved in the regional, regional economic uh, program and uh, we're we excited on what we're going to do uh, in, uh, in June. Uh, we have definitely a consolidated leadership over that. Uh, we're going to have our Comrade Patricia, Comrade Emery, and Comrade Tito. We're going to have three people dedicated to economic development. And we haven't done that. Uh, this, this will be it's a, like a transition for us. So, and we all know we have, uh, in the hands of a DC owner, accumulated leadership. So we can look to, we can tap to, uh, to make sure we succeed uh, here in Europe. So it just was exciting. To see the vision of future. So if you're asking what is socialism looks like, what is the black power looks like, what's the African working class leadership looks like, you've seen, you know, some of it. So join us so you, you can see more and uh, take all the territory and you know develop uh, our movement. 
So I just want to appreciate BC Honor for that presentation. Or, 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 let me just, uh, I think that was important intervention, my comrade, uh, Secretary General Luese. Uh, there is no unemployment in the party, uh, but it, uh, people, it, the party though is not uh, an employment agency uh, because a lot of people who come uh, to the party uh, and join the party, not a lot of people, but there have been some opportunists and mostly these have been swine to tell you the truth, uh, who are concerned about how much money you make and uh, <clears throat> we get it all after the revolution. Uh, right now, we need people who are dedicated to freedom and not money, uh, et cetera, because we don't have the money. We are on an ongoing process and project to get the money. That's what we're talking about now, negating the power and influence. And we do create some employment, et cetera, but that's not the objective. So anybody who come to the party, think about coming to the party uh, to get some money, go the other way. Please join the NAACP. <clears throat> or some other uh, kind of opportunist organization, because that, that ain't us. So I'm sorry, Comrade Yejide. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I truly want to appreciate the, the presentation. I think, you know, um, DC Ona was not a part of like the, the beginning stages of it, but it doesn't even seem like it because she just really takes all of the history of the party, all of the work that had been laid before her and really utilizes that to push the party forward. So it, it all seems like one seamless process, which I really appreciate. And at one point I was in school studying capitalist and economics and, um, and really trying to, and then coming into the party um, or coming into revolutionary political life, really trying to understand what socialist economics look like. And I think we just saw, well, I know we just saw it here, really just looking at how um, an economic system that is rooted in the success of African workers, uh, rooted in um, the building up of African um, worker genius um, looks like, and how that can bring forth the, um, the, the United Socialist Africa and the United Socialist African economy. And so um, if people have any questions about socialist economics, I don't care who you are, you need to look toward the party because the party is putting it down on the ground and really building it out. And I truly appreciate the parts of the presentation. I appreciated all of it, but the parts where we are looking forward, you know, about with ANIBA, the African National Independence uh, Business Association, I believe that's the, the acronym for it. And then also like the Uhuru Wabinki where, you know, we are building um, a, a place within the movement whereby we are um, put all of the organizations are putting money into a starter account so that everybody in the org, every organization can have access to the resources that we collect collectively so that we can push forward our businesses and the NEBA being an institution that can train businesses within business inside the organization, but also outside of the organization on what it means to really bring forth that socialist economic um, uh, entity. And um, I just wanted DC Ona to say more about like the vision for Wabinki and more about the vision for Aniba and um, just help everybody to understand it, you know, their understanding of it. Thank you. Ahuru, comrade. Yeah. Um... Ahura Wabingi was something actually I brought to the party when I first came into the organization, but it, I don't know, sometimes it just takes a while to, you know, catch up. But this is one of the things that, um, you know, I've saw as getting off the treadmill. You know, we always say that all the, all the departments and organization need to be able to sustain themselves. So how are you going to sustain yourself if you don't have the resources to do it? So by pooling all of our, we had, I think we have like 14 different uh, departments that are, um, that are contributing $2,000 to this bank. And so once we get that 28,000, then you would be able to come in and, uh, you know, take a small loan out to really jumpstart, just say if you wanted to buy a uh, product for uh, the colonies, you know, either, you know, the product itself had reps, you want to just, you know, get a bundle of that. You can come in and uh, fill out an application, you know, uh, submit your, uh, you know, your plan uh, and your budget of how you're going to pay it back. You know, it's just a simple way of just bringing all the economic uh, work together and making in, to ensure that all the departments and organization can be successful. 
And we also have, you know, um, and Zay uh, Masimba is on this committee as well. And she's one of the uh, people who are the uh, investigating like the, uh, the loan paybacks, you know, how are we gonna pay it back? Cause that was a big question. Uh, we have a committee uh, of, I think about eight people that sits on this committee. And that was one of the biggest questions that people wanted to know because we don't wanna be a capitalist uh, bank but we want to give people the opportunity to be able to come and, uh, you know, get resources to help sustain and build their uh, economic capacity. Um, and then with Aniba, you know, we, I'm looking forward to this weekend. You know, I hope you're going to be on there too. Uh, is it a around um, Zenzile? We're going to be having, uh, they're going to be having a, a telethon and we're going to be talking about how Zenzile came into being. So Aniba came was an idea that I had because I went to a NARTS, which is the National Association of uh, uh, Thrift Stores, Retails and Thrift Stores. And you, me, and I usually went <laughs> to one of their uh, professional training uh, conferences in actually in Washington, DC. And remember I stayed in your basement. We, we have no money, you know, <laughs> like, but anyway, so, you know, this is an organization that provides all kinds of business trainers to uh, the professional professions of uh, retailers and thrift, thrift stores, but now they call them more consignment stores or things like that. And you just learn all the things about uh, how to start your business, uh, you know, laying out the uh, technical uh, aspects of, um, you know, of your business, uh, building uh, your customer base, you know, uh, training on customer service, all kinds of anything that you can think of, um, they train you on. So um, I was talking to the chairman, he was like, we got to have our own uh, association. So that's how NEBA came to life. And we're really looking forward to uh, really building this because we've already really initiated it through the Buy Bike Power uh, campaign that's led by Matok in Philadelphia and Ali. Um, but we need to bring it all together to start, you know, um, having different businesses come in and because what we're going to be calling on them to do is also be a trainer in this process, you know, because when you go to NARTS, everybody who's a part of that organization is also a trainer who are giving uh, classes and stuff for free, you know, so we want it to be for free, uh, um, you know, for people to come and learn how to um, you know, learn how to be in business. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. Don't say it too loud because the chairman you want me to do all this at one time. <laughs> Udo, I just want to say, I'm on the next person to speak, but the, I, for me, all of this is significant because people are always trying to go into business and, and, and most people who try to go into business fail. Most often they don't, they don't know how to do it. They don't have skills, technique, they don't have support systems and things like that. Many people just assume if you want to do something, just open up a store and somebody's going to come in and that's what it's going to be. So, so we need to give, equip people with how to do it. And then the second thing is we need to be influenced in people what business uh, has to do. It has, they have to become a part of an anti-colonial movement. Mm -hmm. They want to have, they need to be able to unite with their people, unite with the community. So it's not just some self-serving kind of business because that's one of the problems that we often have when people talk about buy black, buy black, buy black. But you have these African businesses that treat African people like dirt and don't make any contribution like to the movement because capitalism uh, promotes that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's one thing about it. And so we can uh, create an anti-colonial because we have to have an economy. That's one thing that people don't get. You're talking about making a, a, a struggle for national liberation, you're going to be free. You got to have an economy. You got to have, so we say you got a business, then you're a capitalist. No, we got a business because we have to eat. People have to have uh, uh, institutionalized the capacity to feed, clothe, and house ourselves. And sometimes that's look like what we call businesses. So the working class needs to be able to do that. And we need to be able to influence other people who are in our community who are not part of the revolution to be at least anti-colonialist. Anti they, if they're not anti-capitalist, they gotta be against white domination in our community, white economic domination in our community. And that's one aspect of it. But another thing is really important because I see um, Uhuru Wabinki uh, as being an incipient international bank of African people. We started out inside our movement and on an international level, this is happening and a movement on an international level, Uhuru Wabinki. 
and we end up creating an African people's independent work, a bank, uh, you know, and that's, it's an incipient bank and it's the, the real movement from one to the other is not gonna be that great. Somebody was gonna say something before I rudely interrupted, Uhuru. Uhuru. Yes. Uhuru, I just, um, my name is Aisha Fields. Um, I'm the international director for the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project. And I just really want to salute that presentation by Deputy Chair uh, Ona Zene. And I really want to express like my deep and profound appreciation to you, Deputy Chair, for everything that you bring to the African People's Socialist Party, everything you bring to the Uhuru movement, everything you bring to the African nation. And I look at like everything that that you have been tasked to take on, you do it in a way that brings science and it brings art. You know, I mean, you approach everything in a way that's winning and that allows us to continue to build and to win people to the highest kind of stance possible. And a lot of that comes through struggle, you know, mm -hmm. and I appreciate, mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate your willingness to constantly make that struggle. And one of the things that I wanted to Say that I think makes this whole presentation and this discussion so profound is that uh, you could have easily become capitalist, could have easily become someone who took all of those skills that you have in you know, creating, uh, um, you know, uh, businesses and bringing people in to serve yourself, you know, um, to serve you as an individual or to serve your family, you know. And a lot of times I think that that's that narrative is in many ways, what we're up against, you know, uh, throughout the African community, throughout the African world, is that somehow as individuals, we have the capacity to solve the problem that, that we're confronted with as a people, you know, and we're given solutions or what we are supposed to be solutions, like uh, 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 creating your own business. That's how you can, that's how we can, you know, move forward as a people and what you've laid out for us and what the chairman and the party have laid out for us is the genuine solution, which is um, collective process to build, as chairman said, uh, independent African economy and bringing all the skills that we have to the movement, not uh, in some self-serving kind of way, you know, but in a way that advances the whole people. And I really want to appreciate and salute the party for this, um, yeah, for this profound and I hope the people see that. I hope the people understand that because that's the only way forward. We're not going to move forward as individuals attempting to, you know, feed our children and that be the primary purpose of, 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 of our activity or of the way we apply our skills uh, and that the African People's Socialist Party is the vehicle, it is the vehicle. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to salute that. And I, I want to really look forward to um, talking with you more about the work that you were involved in directly and Yejide and others to help mm -hmm. us to initiate NZLA consignment. I know a lot of times it's the confidence, you know, that we lack sometimes and even thinking that certain things are possible. What you laid out in the report is what the party has been doing for more than 50 years, you know, in creating concrete, concrete manifestations of the fact that African people can create life for ourselves. And what more can we do as like Secretary General was saying, what more can we do with the resources of Africa at our disposal? Mm. What more mm. can we do? If we can do this, with this kind of relationship and the limited resources we have, what more can we do? That's the future. Mm -hmm. I really wanna appreciate that presentation. Uh -huh. Thank you. Well, comrades, I know that people on this central committee would have a lot to say, but we don't want to hog it because there are other people who probably want to say some stuff or ask some questions uh, as well, who are not on the central committee and who are not private. Like we in the central committee, even though it's exciting and stuff to us now, we go through these meetings on a regular basis. We've talked about this before in different ways, but there are people who don't have uh, that kind of access who are members of our party and our movement, uh, who I want to give an opportunity and others. And I want to give an opportunity to say so, but I would like to hear from comrades, uh, comrades uh, Malika, uh, Malika already said something. Uh, Malika said something? Yeah, she was the first one. Didn't you Malika? 
Is she on here? Yeah, she's on here. Yeah, she said. Oh, you brought Uru, 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 comrades. Oh, this. My name is uh, Matum Umenyobi, and I'm a member of the African Socialist International. Um, I'm also uh, the Northern Region representative of the African People's Socialist Party in the United States. So but we are um, just we are all one 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 entity. We're not just uh, we are united, you know, here in in America, in the Caribbean, and also in Africa. So. Um, I just wanted to say that, and I want to say I want to appreciate the chairman, uh, you know, his overview. And I also definitely want to um, salute the deputy chair, Ona Zanea Shetela, for her, uh, her excellent uh, presentation. Uh, the deputy chair, um, well, she doesn't do anything unless she approaches it with excellence. And uh, we only can um, learn from her, you know. I know she's a struggling, struggling, struggling Matum. <laughs> you gotta do it. <laughs> Matum, you got to do it. The 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 Congress, you regional leaders, you gotta go do the damn work. <laughs> there ain't no excuse. And this is what the beautiful, brilliant thing about the party. You don't have to be no, you they will make you a leader, you'll be in meetings. You never thought you would. You, when they, they give you responsibility and um, it, it, it doesn't matter. That's what the beautiful thing about the party. I, I know since I'm, I'm in Philadelphia and I know since I've been there, we have uh, institutions there that's been there for uh, and before I even got into political life. I used to see the Uhuru House downtown and how crowded and busy it was. And now um, they they always elevating, you, you know. It's never sitting still. Always striving to build and, and, and you know to support the community, to support the, the African community, and and show um, the the marketplace, magnificent marketplace, um, and the regional you know called for us, the political report called for the region representative to lead this work. And it's not easy, but it gotta be done. It gotta be done. And so I'm, uh, I, I've been blessed, you know, to, to, to be in the party and to see all the economics, uh, everything. I've seen so many things built since I've been here. I've seen them talk about it. They're being manifested. So, um, I don't want to um, just take up too much time because I know if somebody else might want to speak, but I definitely, again, want to appreciate the deputy chair because um, she don't just talk about it, she's, she's about it. I mean, um, just think we got a who our bingy bank, you know, in the making. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just, um, just grateful, you know, so many different programs. The economic and politics is, is one. Uh, chairman, I always say that um, politics is nothing but concentrated economics. We, our main, main problems in all, maybe in, in Africa or Azana, Azania or in the Caribbean or in America is our economics. And, and so through that, we, that's how we'll get our power. And you see it in St. Louis. You see it um, in St. Petersburg, Florida in Oakland, California, here in Philadelphia. And we're gonna have, we're gonna to come to the, um, the continent as well as one. We come together as one and we will build, we'll be victorious. This is socialism. We're in the anti-capitalists. And I point that out. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about our, our institutions. They belong to the people. And it, you know, so there's a connection with the people, with these institutions to fight for them because that belong to them. And that's what socialism looks like. Oh, hold on, Comrade. Oh. I want, uh, uh, Comrade uh, Director, I just want to hear briefly uh, from Comrade uh, Penny Hess, and then let's open it up for any other discussion that might be out there. We don't have much time. I want, I would really like to see if there's anyone other than, 
ourselves who would like to engage in this discussion. Uhuru. Uhuru Chairman, Uhuru Deputy Chair and members of the Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. It's such an honor to be here today. I wanna to salute and express my unity with Chairman Omali Chatella's overview, brilliant overview that opened up this session today. And I wanna join in saluting Deputy Chair's brilliant, profound and beautiful and very moving presentation today that was something I think that has been said that took the entire history of the parties economic slash political work and, and put it together as one dialectical whole. And it was, you know, I, I just think about in the years, the earlier years of APSC, the African People's Solidarity Committee and of the party in Oakland, there was always the struggle and protests and demonstrations on the streets around police vi violence, prison, the, all these questions, but it was always taken and analyzed as an anti-colonial struggle, never as a single issue. And that the party was always building the institutional infrastructure of the party. And I, I was struck by seeing the slide of Uhuru Park, where, as you know, the, the party organized Africans who were forced to live in that park in downtown Oakland and there was a physical structure being built and had a sign on it that said the Uhuru City Hall. And it was, you know, it was just so um, indicative of telling how the party does colonial analysis, Bessie Wood struggle. And the party has, um, has built I just wanted to say that the African People's Solidarity Committee also was created, as you said, Chairman, to forward the national liberation of African people. And so the parties, what Deputy Chair has shown here is what defines APSC's um, call to the white community, to white people as a whole, and to the money sector as well for reparations. And it defines APSC's work, all of which is directly accountable to the Office of Deputy Chair. And it shows when APSC as the party's strategy in the white community makes the demand for reparations, it is an anti-colonial struggle. It's not racism, it's not charity, it's not feeling good of white people. It is literally black power and white face. And it is about turning over the stolen resources and reversing the parasitic um, verdict of parasitic capitalism. It is an anti-imperialist stand for, for white people. And it, it's just, it's very, very profound to have seen this presentation um, and to be able to, you know, deepen always our responsibility to on the pedestal of parasitic capitalism on the backs of African and oppressed peoples of the world to play a critical and strategic role for the African revolution demanding rep reparations from the white population as a revolutionary demand. So I just really appreciate that incredible presentation and the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, Uhuru. Uhuru. Comrade uh, Director. Uhuru. Uhuru, yes, we do have people who have some questions from our online audience, so we want to get into those. But this has been an amazing discussion so far and, um, you know, following, again, that incredible presentation by our deputy chair. So before we get into um, those questions, of course, we want to acknowledge where people are watching from. We're on Facebook and YouTube. So we have Oakland, California, San Diego, California, Portland, Oregon, Houston, Texas. Um, Huntsville, Alabama, St. Petersburg, Florida, Gainesville, Florida, Fort Myers, Florida, Pinellas Park, Florida, New Orleans, Louisiana, St. Louis, Missouri, Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, New York City, New York, Boston, Massachusetts, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Roselle, New Jersey, Hempstead, um, New York, um, Cape Verde, and Occupied Azania. So that's um, where people are viewing from right now, tuning into this study. And a um, couple of questions that we had. One of them was from um, well, actually, I wanted to acknowledge one comment uh, from 
a brother named Dennis Wilson said, how do I get help here in the UK? I want to be a part of this. Uh, so someone in the UK, S.G. Louise, um, I don't see him, but I think his camera's off, but um, asked, you know, how can he be involved um, with the work that's happening? And I want to encourage everyone, no matter where you're located, to visit APSPRU.org. And that's how you can join the African People's Socialist Party, no matter where you are. So um, if, the, if you saw this work and you know that this is what you want to do, um, that you can visit that website. And SG Louise is in London, um, as he stated earlier. So uh, that's to Dennis. And um, a question from, I had a question from um, William Duke says, Uhuru, on a city by city basis for APSP members, what is the localized model or blueprint for us in Atlanta to follow? Is there a team building plan training? And I'm, he's talking specifically about the economic work, um, basically, you know, like how to make this um, work happen on a, um, on a, a local scale. And I, that person's based out in Atlanta. So I don't know who wants to, to take that question. Um, it could be possibly even a uh, Kobina, who's a Southern Regional Rep, uh, but Uhuru. Well, let, let, me, let, let me say that uh, the primary thing that we're involved in now is building the, uh, revel the instrument for the liberation of our people. And the economic question falls within that category. Uh, the thing is that this is, uh, again, uh, uh, political education of the African People's Socialist Party. It is obvious for members of the party, but it's also for uh, people at large, so that Africans who want to participate in this uh, economic work should join the party, or uh, should join the Uhuru movement, uh, because the objective, again, is not just to help people set up businesses. That, 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 is, that happens, but to help people, uh, uh, but to build a party that can provide the leadership overall uh, for the struggle for our liberation. And in that process, you know, uh, we do, you know, try to facilitate uh, through some of the programs that was just discussed by Comrade Deputy Chair, uh, uh, you know, like um, uh, even Aniba, you know, helping, that's an institution that we just talked about. Uh, if you have a business or you want a business, you can become, you can join that or try to connect with Aniba and get that kind of training and expertise made it available to you. So I just think it's really important that we're not saying everybody go out and set you, establish your businesses. We're saying everybody come and join the, the revolution and the, and the organization to liberate African people. Uhuru. Kobina was about to say something, but I just wanted to make that point. Oh, no, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that, uh, our Chairman. And I, I, I really, like everybody else, you really unite with the overview and uh, Deputy Chair's uh, presentation and it always leaves you like wow <laughs> like I, I want to join a revolution again you know uh, but it, it just lays out you know uh, a future and 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 you see you know the history of the party and 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 you see the future and and it's, and it's clear that uh, the who movement and African people's social party is the future and um, you know if you're in the Southern region, you know, definitely join the party. Uh, you can contact me, put the information in so we can contact you. Uh, we want to build uh, the party wherever we at. want to build the, the, the revolution, you know, where, wherever we are. And if we're not there, we want to get there. So you can help us, you know, uh, uh, get there by coming into this process uh, to join a party and um, going to APSP Uhuru, uh, you know, dot org and and and, and join. Um, you know, and uh, and we can have a, a deeper discussion. You know, to see you know what your interest is and how you can bring those skills to the party. And I just really want to reiterate the, you know, the stuff that the that's happening in the southern region. You know, we really, um, you know, from the Hoover House that has a has a, one of our oldest institutions in St. Petersburg to Zenzele Consignment Shop right here in Huntsville, uh, Alabama. You know, uh, but I, like DC owner's uh, presentation, it just shows that the economic and political are one and that, um, but it's not, you know, just in and of itself. We The movement does a lot of work, but it's not just, you know, uh, economic institutions. It's a part of a process that is forwarding the African revolution and for us to take power. Like we have Black Power 96 in the Southern region 
you know, uh, it's not just a radio station. You know what I'm saying? We have community guards. And, and by the way, Bakri, I take that challenge and it's on and popping. <laughs> so <laughs> we got the guard, community guards, we're out there. You know, uh, but it's not just a community garden. We want you to grow food, but it's not just about that. You know what I'm saying? Because people have community gardens. The city has community gardens. But this is a, a you know, garden to, to help us to be self-sufficient and 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 uh, self-determining. So to, to advance the revolution. So, you know, it's the revolution first. Uh -huh. That's the center. And then, you know, uh, you know, we build, you know, uh, 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 beyond that so you know mm -hmm. definitely get your information so we can get in contact mm -hmm. with you and uh you can be a part of this process a part of history to uh take power and overturn mm -hmm. imperialism once mm -hmm. for once and for all uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. um okay like can i just say that um this work doesn't happen in a vacuum you know uh we everybody on this uh panel has participated in building all the institutions from, you know, Black Power 96 to uh, Aquaba Hall and the Uhura House in St. Louis and, you know, going to Oakland, you know, just everybody, not just uh, me, I lead the work, but we have a whole team of people, all the comrades that are part of our movement and solidarity movement have come together to make all this work happen. Like I said, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It is self-determination, you know, and struggle. You know, and a lot of time people come into the movement and they see it as it is, as it stands, but they don't know what it took to get it like that. It took a lot of hard, hard work. And Cobina, I remember you guys coming down from the Southern region to St. Louis. I think I was sick. I had been, I had caught something. I thought I was gonna die in St. Louis because it was so cold there. We had no, we had no electricity. We had no heat in the building and people came from the Southern region, from Northern region, Matung came down. I mean, people just came cause they saw the, you know, saw the process in action and they wanted to be a part of. It. And I just really want to salute, you know, everybody on the central committee as well as all the comrades and the ODC, uh, USM, uh, all the different departments that, you know has contributed to making this work and forging the way for this anti-colonial economy that we're going to build. We, you know, we are going to build it. We're going to be self-governing people. Uhura. Uhura. I want to remind us, comrades, that <laughs> with the, the political report is going to be expressed uh, through other presentations that we have. Uh, next Sunday, we'll have uh, an opportunity to have some more discussions as well. But is there anybody else that's uh, trying, to, trying to say anything to us, comrade director? Yes, Uhura. So we have comrade Nindu in Fort Myers. Um, asked the question, um, when the chairman says that the civil rights movement was a revolution from above, how was economics involved? That's his question. I think that's a really important question. Uh, one of the points I was making in terms of uh, anti-colonial movement, uh, by the time of the civil rights movement, uh, the struggle of African people was on the defensive. Uh, you got to remember that it followed the defeat of the of the revolutionary movement led by Marcus Garvey about a few years, but uh, uh, they had crushed our movement. And this is another point I wanted to make too, because uh, that you, everybody, all the people who are in this party, in this movement, all the people who are uh, participating and watching this study one way or another, have to uh, be committed to protecting these institutions have to be committed to protecting, to building and protecting these institutions. Because that's what, what will happen because the significance of these institutions is not something that we just struck by and we really, wow, that's really great. But the imperialists see it too. We've said that the, these institutions contribute to negating the authority, the power of the colonizer. So the colonizer doesn't, that's why you, the colonizer attacked Venezuela. That's why the colonizers attack Iran. That's why the colonizers wage and struggle all around the world because the, the parasite needs to have a host. And if you can uh, take care of yourself, then you're no longer a host for the parasite. You're no longer available. So you can anticipate ongoing struggles to, uh, uh, from the state to try to crush this movement, either the state in terms of uh, openly doing it, uh, contradictions, the government start finding, you know, uh, with uh, 
with our procedures, health regulations, all kinds of stuff that they will create for us to be problematic, to push us out of here. And uh, uh, from the neo-colonialists, uh, like Negroes who are in, in power, Negroes who actually occupy political posts, they are in office, see us as the threat because as somebody has already seen, it says what they are not doing. That's what APDEP, uh, Comrade uh, 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 Aisha, uh, is uh, all about. When we go into a country and take people into that country to bring clean water, to do these other kinds of things, we are saying if if the government wanted to do it, and with all the resources that it has that is that is given to the imperialists, this could be done otherwise. But now you see we, the people can do it, and so that's a problem. So we can expect that to be attacked. But in the in the issue of um, the revolution from above, uh, uh, Garvey, as I said, uh, represented the struggle. So all these institutions, people love Garvey. Garvey had ship lines and stuff like that and, and building uh, factories, et cetera, that we have to do. Uh, but that was a real threat. And so crush Garvey movement, and now it pushed us now on the defensive. So now we are trying to find a way to live with white power, and not only live with it, live with it even as it's killing us and shooting us and, and being, you know, uh, you know, just uh, submitting to it in, a, in, in some way or another. And uh, so you don't have independent economics. You don't really have it. You don't really have it, uh, uh, that kind of emphasis because if your objective is to integrate with the colonizer, then there is no need uh, to create your own economic institutions. The, the fact the colonizer, uh, if your aspiration is to be part of a colonizer, then you are you have been successful once you integrate. Of course, that's the quite ghost that you're changing, uh, chasing because the, the oppressed can never integrate with the oppressor. You can't integrate with, you don't make that decision that you can integrate with the white man. I mean, <laughs> it's the oppressed. If the oppressor wanted that to happen, you know what uh, integration by the oppressor is called? Gentrification. You don't integrate with the, with the oppressor. And so uh, that is part of what it means economically. Even though African people have businesses and wanted businesses, they, when they donated their money after the government, they donated to NAACP. NAACP has never, never, never had an economic program other than getting with white people. They brag about being the largest, oldest organization ever. They don't even have a barbecue stand, nothing. You understand, so so that's their solution, and uh, uh, and so you have all these people who feeding, and uh, the things that train the African community not to be self reliant, but to rely on white power, and sometimes they rely on white power militantly. People like to brag about today what King talked about socialism, or King was a real secret socialist or something. So he was a damn socialist. What the hell does that have to do with becoming independent, free? you know, uh, as a people and self-reliant. He did nothing about that. He said nothing about that. And that's what we understand uh, to be really important, Yundi. Uh, in Yundi, uh, say it again. In Yundu. In Yundu. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the critical thing. So that's the fundamental difference in the whole civil rights, anti-racist uh, kind of movement. You can be militantly anti-racist. I've known anti-racists who go and shoot people, et cetera. Uh, but it doesn't change our circumstances and the relations of power that exist between the oppressed and the oppressor. And that's what we are about. And that's what the economic development work, that's why we do economic development work and they don't. Even people who we disagree with, even people who uh, try to create neo-colonial situations often uh, will create institutions, uh, black power, quote unquote, institutions uh, that, uh, tried to establish businesses and what have you, which, which is not the same thing as saying that they're trying to negate the existence, negate the relationship that we have to the colonial power. That's what we are about, Uhuru. Oh, I took up a lot of time. We took up a lot of time, rather, in this. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yes, unfortunately, we're like a minute away from announcements. Um, but I wanted to know, Deputy Chair, did you have anything you wanted to say in terms of any kind of closing before we go into announcements for today? I just want people to join the African People's Socialist Party. That's the call that we have to make right now. Join the party, join the revolution. 
so you can be a part of building this anti-colonial economic uh, economy so we can govern ourselves. So join APSPOhuru.org, go there, fill out the contact sheet, and hey, sign up for economic development. <laughs> Uhuru, I just want to say in closing, uh, uh, Director, uh, that again, uh, when we talk about economics in the party, we're talking about becoming independent and free. And it is not about individuals who just want to get a business. I mean, we will set up a process from the party because the African working class needs to lead everything. So we will lead, we will create the leadership for people who might want to set up businesses, but we will do it in a fashion that uh, pushes us against colonial domination, against white power, any other force in our communities all around this country and the United States, you will see that all kinds of entities are in there making money where once upon a time, there might've even been African businesses. So we would try to provide that leadership, but that's not what it is. And I just wanna say that for people who are skeptical and, and uh, uh, about uh, this process, uh, because we don't have factories and we don't have airplanes and ships yet. But when I was growing up, I was struck by uh, the fact that almost everything you got had written on it made in Japan, a pencil. Japan had been bombed out of existence. Nuclear weapons had destroyed the economy of Japan, destroyed hundreds of thousands of people in Japan, civilians, you know, the United States did that. And so, uh, but you got a pencil, almost every pencil you had has stamped on it, made in Japan. This is after that war. Or other little trinkets, made in Japan. People would laugh at it, you know, Japan, Japan, made in Japan. And that's, that's how they began rebuilding, just small stuff like that. People don't laugh at Japan as an economic entity, uh, economic force anymore. And what we have to understand is that you start from some place. And we've done more than just start from some place. This discussion takes us beyond when we were out uh, picking oranges uh, uh, in the orange fields uh, to try to uh, raise a little money or even selling chocolate chip cookies uh, following the Grateful Dead. This beyond, yes, we did it. And the people, these are cookie sellers. Yeah, we selling cookies. And then we have a whole Uhuru uh, bakery cafe. And then we have what we are building right now in, in, in St. Louis. We, we start uh, from where we are and then we build. We concentrate all of our forces because we want to be free. And you can't be free if you can't feed, clothe, and house yourselves. In fact, we're in such a situation, African people, that if white people stopped making toilet paper, we'd have to go back to corn cobs or something like that. That's the situation we're in. We have to be able to feed, clothe, and house ourselves. And that's what this discussion is about. That's what this revolution is about. That's why you come into the party so that we can be free. An essential aspect of knowing that you're free is when you can be self-reliant. And that's why the United States government works all the time to destroy the ability of peoples around the world to be self-reliant so that they can control them, control their economies and the rest of that, Uhuru. Thank you, Comrade Deputy Chair. Splendid, splendid presentation. Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Deputy Chair. And thank you to all of our panelists as well, which is the leadership of the African Socialist Party um, and her movement. So because of time, we want everyone to know that if your question was not answered, one of our moderators will correspond with you and make sure that the chairman does see your question. This study was brought to you by the Department of Agitation and Propaganda, Winning the War of Ideas. For your revolutionary news and analysis, you can visit theburningspear.com. And for revolutionary radio, dynamic shows, and music heard by music by Africans all around the world, tune into Black Power 96.3 FM, broadcasting out of St. Petersburg, Florida, and accessible via the Black Power 96 app for Apple and Android or online at blackpower96.org. If you united what you heard today, you've heard the call many, many times, no matter where you're located, visit APSPRU.org to join the African People's Socialist Party. Order your copy of Chairman Amalia Chantella's latest book, Vanguard, The Advanced Detachment of the African Revolution, The Political Report to the Seventh Congress at BurningSphereMarketplace.com. Here are today's events. Following this study, visit aldahuru.org to register for day two of African Liberation Day, the, um, hosted by the African People's Socialist Party. The program for today um, starts at 11 a.m. Eastern. So right from this, get yourself together attend ALD from the African Socialist Party. This ALD is themed up Ye Mighty Africans forward to a united socialist Africa. 
be part of a dynamic conference, including powerful presentations from leaders, the ones that you see right now, um, cultural presentations and from talented artists and the way forward for our Africa, our African people and our political, social and economic liberation from white power imperialism. On Wednesday, May 27th, 6 p.m. Pacific time, Uhuru Foods and Pies hosts an important web event to sum up these times under the crisis of COVID-19 and how Uhuru Foods and Pies is addressing this crisis for the people. Ain't no stopping us now, Uhuru Foods and Pies on the move. Visit the burningspear.com events page to find the link to attend. The Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations will host its fourth annual electoral campaign school on June 13th and 14th and registration is open at blackisbackcoalition.org. The African National Women's Organization is hosting the Black Women's Convention theme, Sisters United for the Revolution, July 10th through 12th. Registration details can be found at anwohuru.org. And we are calling on all people to follow closely the All African development and empowerment project on Facebook or visit developmentforafrica.org for important information and helpful tips in regards to COVID-19 and if you want to um, turn over your resources and skills to that really important project including um, offering you know um, you know your skills in terms of health workers for the African um, community throughout the world. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Burning Spear TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Omali Taught Me Sunday Study. Guru, catch you back here next Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern. Guru.